Praise the name of the Lord. We may be seated. Right, uh, time is not very much on our side, but for the few moments that are remaining, the Lord has laid a short message in my heart. I am directing this message to pastors Joshua and Ruth, but also to us as the church. Right, uh, I think on our social media, you show the theme and the text, the verses that we are going to read from today. It is 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 and 9, and the emphasis is on verse 9. Now, Paul is in Ephesus. Now, the next slide shows you uh, where Ephesus actually is. Now, that is uh, the picture that you do see uh, is Ephesus during the New Testament time. This is how Ephesus looked like during the New Testament time. When you go on a religious tour to modern Turkey, which was the Asia Minor at that time, you will see some of the remains of the great temple of Diana. It was the biggest temple at that time. But the, the, the city of Ephesus, that is where it is situated on our map. So Paul is in Ephesus. And he is talking to the Christians, the church in Corinth. And he writes to them. He gives them some instructions. In verse 1 and 2, he is saying concerning the gifts that you have collected. Now, they were collecting gifts for the drought-stricken church in Jerusalem. So, the churches which Paul planted and they related with him, they were collecting some money for the drought-stricken church in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, but also the way Christians who are going through difficult times because of their new faith in Christ. So Paul is telling them that I told you to, when you meet, you must collect the first day of the week. This is what you must do. So they expected Paul to pass by and collect those gifts and take them to Jerusalem. But Paul has a change of heart. He has a change of plans. He has a change of itinerary or travel plans. And this is what we find in verses 8 and 9. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. In other words, I had planned to via Corinth and take those gifts to Jerusalem. But the Lord has made me to change my plans. This nine for a great door and effectual is opened unto me. And there are many adversaries. Paul is saying, I have changed my plans. I, have, I, will, tell, I will wait. I will stay here in Ephesus until Pentecost. In fact, it is the Lord himself who has changed the plans. Why? Because the Lord has opened the door. It says in the New Living Translation, because a door of great opportunity stands wide open. Somebody shout the name of the Lord. This was my plan to come to you. But the Lord has decided, Pastor Joshua, to open a great door of opportunity. In the New International Reader's Version, a door has opened wide. It is not a door that is oh, just a small door open. It is, this door is wide. In the King James Version, it says, for a great an effective door has been opened. I like it in the message Bible. It says, I don't want to just drop 
occupy in between other primary destinations. I want a good long leisurely visit. If the masters agrees, we'll have it for the present. I am staying right here in Ephesus. The message Bible says a huge dome of opportunity for God. Good work has opened up in brackets. There is also much rooming opposition. In other words, the thrust at the center of the message that is directed to pastors Joshua and Ruth and indeed all of us on this day we are welcoming them God is the God of open doors God is the God who opens doors for his people for his servants and for his church I have coined my message very Briefly, opportunity, obligation, and opposition. The first thing that I read from this text is that God, Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he was opening doors then, he will open doors for us today. If it was God who created opportunities for his church and for his people, he will create opportunities for us even today. What type of doors that we read about here? Now me and Pastor Joshua don't read only English, baby and Zong and Shifanda. We also read Greek and, and, and Hebrew as well. Now, this expression, a great door has been opened in the Greek New Testament. It doesn't follow the word order as we do in our languages. But, Thura, Gar, Moi, Anoigen, Megalen. Now, mega, mega land, Tatana, you can. Mega is big, a big door, big, big. You, 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 you can just. Now, this is a very um, interesting adjective. It is very strange. And then you can means the door stands open. It means the door stays open. It means there is no one who will shut the door. Paul is saying, I'm not going there in Corinth, but I will stay here in Ephesus because God has opened Megalan, a greater, a big, Door, and this door, when God has opened it, there is no one, there is no man, there is no demon who will close this door. Pastor Joshua and Ruth, we are saying today, God is going to open doors. God is going to open opportunities for you and for us here at People's Church. And no one is going to close, no one is going to shut. God is the God of open doors. You read also in Revelation 3 verse 7 and 8. The church in Philadelphia. Some people say Philadelphia. Philadelphia is just, it refers to all lovers of God. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia right these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david and who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens i know your works see i have set before you an open door 
and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. God is saying also to the church of Philadelphia that God has opened a door for you. God has opened opportunities for you. Now, if you wish to do your Bible study, read Acts chapter 19. That is when Paul was in Ephesus. Let me just give you an example of the things that you will read about which Paul says, God has opened a door for me here in Ephesus. Verse 17. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Verse 19. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they contained up and the value of them and a total 50,000 pieces of silver. The Lord is working in Ephesus. People are turning to the gospel. People are turning to Christ. Those who are practicing sorcery, those who are practicing magic, they brought, these are Greeks, these are sophisticated people. They are bringing their books. Now, this 50,000 pieces of silver, it is estimated that it is more than a million, today's more than a million US dollars. And those who were handlers of this business did not take this very kind. But the fact of the matter is, the gospel is preached. God has opened a door for the apostle Paul and people are coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And they are turning their ways. And they are coming to Christ. Mary to Joshua. It's going to happen. Just right here in Pulukwani. In Shishiko. It's going to happen. People are going to turn to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Because it is the door that is opened by man. But it is God who will open the door for you. It is God who will open that opportunity for you. Rick Warren says, vision is the ability to see the opportunities within your current circumstances. Vision, the vision that God has given us. It makes us see the opportunities that God has created. Susan Tate says, God opens doors, but we need faith to go through them. In other words, God opens doors. Doors, but we need to believe in him. We need to trust him that this is what is going to happen. Zig Ziglar, American author, humility will open more doors than arrogance. We are humbled than never before. It is not a take, but it's God doings in a mist. Lisa Austin says, when we put God first in our lives, he will open the right Doors for us and cause all things to work together for the good. I pray right here at People's Church, Pastor Joshua and Ruth are joining us. I pray and I decree that unlimited blessings will be a portion. Unknown territories will be reached. Unimaginable adventures will be made. Glorious exploits. Inexhaustible resources. Unfettered. Unbound.
accomplishments, uh, immeasurable uh, achievements, immaculate uh, undertakings, um, abundant uh, breakthroughs uh, are going to happen. Uh, I have declared, uh, I have decreed, uh, not on my own, uh, but prophetically, that God uh, is going to open uh, doors for us as uh, the church. Praise God. Now, obligation. These two verses, verse 9 in particular, Paul feels this is an obligation. I am obliged. In other words, it's not something that I'm going to pay lip service to, but I believe this is commitment. We were at Cornerstone Church yesterday. We called all the leaders and we told each other. We dream together. It is good to dream as a church. We dream together that God is going to do something here which He never did before. We have a project called Vision 2030. We believe by 2030, we would have planted eight campuses around the city of Tswane. We believe. Leave us to dream alone. Leave us to dream. And we believe by 2030. Can you go to the next slide? We will be having not less than 16,000 congregants. Hey! We are dreaming. And we told ourselves, there's a new concept that has been coined by the so-called Heart for the House team. It's called Kingdom Builders. Hey, Dade Mukhudi, we have never raised a million rands. In less than 24 months, let me tell you, it is going to happen in the name of Jesus because we want to reach people for the gospel. Commitment, obligation to do stuff you have never done before. Not for yourselves, but because God has opened a door for us. We are obliged. We are committed. Bennett Wilson says, extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. We saw a need that needed to be filled and we stepped in to help. In other words, we as the church, God opened our spiritual eyes to be committed, to be obliged. Jeremiah 32 verse 27, I am the Lord, the God of all humankind, mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? There is nothing too hard for God. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. I read this verse yesterday, this Five, the three verses, Exodus 36, verse 4, 5, and 6. The skilled workers are coming. The skilled workers are coming to Moses. They're building the sanctuary. They are building the tabernacle. They are not complaining, but they are saying, Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work of the Lord that you commanded us to do. That Moses gave an order that they sent his word throughout the camp. No man, no woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more. I want us to arrive at this point that through the help of the Lord, we are having more than enough to preach the gospel. Rick Warren says, lack of commitment makes us to ask wrong questions, to bark at wrong trees, to scratch where it doesn't itch. 
May God help us as a church. Obligation means we are committed. Murudu Joshua, we are committed to help you and to continue to preach the gospel. The last reading of these two verses, opposition. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries. Now, always when people talk about opposition, they talk about opposition, you know, this one opposing me. I'm not there. I'm not talking about people opposing others in the church or in Ephesus. We are talking of something different. Opposition can be internal, but also it can be external. Now, this I regard as opposition to do to continue with God's work. This one of Acts chapter 19. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance. Saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. When they had this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Now I call this internal, maybe passive opposition. These people, these Christians in Ephesus, they were preaching the gospel, but they have not heard that there is power. There is the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul says, I cannot come to Corinth. Now Paul is saying over here that I cannot come there. There is a problem internally. There are people who are saved. There are people who are preaching the gospel but they don't have the power to preach the gospel. Therefore, I'm going to teach them there is something more than talent. There is something more than gift. There is something more than ability. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tarry over here until the church is equipped in Ephesus. When the spirit is moving, there is always opposition. Now, there was riot. There was great rioting in Ephesus because of the gospel. Now we read 
from verse 23 in Acts 19. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. The way is capital letters, you will see. About Christianity. About the church. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. Huge profits. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. In other words, because of the preaching of the gospel, because people came to the saving knowledge of Jesus, people had to lose their dubious ways of making prophets. So there was a huge mobilization against Paul, against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ and people were shouting great is Diana they were in opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ people may not physically riot around us but Muruti Joshua I assure you in the spiritual realm the devil is not happy that you are here with your wife with your family and we are going to preach the word of God together there is mobilization in the spiritual realm for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principles Politics uh, against powers, uh, against rulers uh, of the darkness uh, of this age, uh, against spiritual hosts uh, of wickedness uh, in the heavenly places. Second Corinthians 10 for, all, for our weapons uh, of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God uh, for pulling down uh, the strongholds. Uh, you have been encouraged uh, that uh, you should attend uh, the prayer meetings. Uh, praise uh, the name of the Lord. Uh, somebody shout uh, the name of the Lord. Why? Uh, because uh, when we come together, we this uh, um, uh, the works of the devil. Muruti, uh, there is uh, mobilization uh, in the spiritual realm. Uh, but we are going to win. Uh, we are going to prevail. Uh, why? Uh, because we are going to pray. Uh, we are going to shake the face uh, of the almighty God. Let us conclude our message today in the light of the message that is preached today. We wish to say today, we don't have plan B, but we have plan A from the Lord. The doors are opened. Opportunities are open because a great door of effective work has been opened. And, uh, we read uh, that Paul and Silas uh, preached uh, the gospel uh, in Caesarea Philippi. Uh, there was great uh, opposition there. They were chained uh, and they were thrown uh, in stocks. They were thrown uh, in thrown uh, in jail uh, and at midnight somebody shout the name of the Lord at midnight they sang hymns and, 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 and psalms to the Lord when the praises go up the glory of the Lord comes down they knew very well that they are here and it was God's commission for them to be there. I'm not going to read the entire passage of scripture, but verse 26 of Acts 16, suddenly there was a violent earthquake. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is a violent earthquake, not physically, but in the spiritual realm. There is a realignment. There is a shifting in the spiritual realm. And the foundations of the prison were shaken at once. All the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Praise the name of the Lord. You know what? God.
God is going to do things because uh, Peter and uh, Silas, uh, they, 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 they went out uh, and uh, they went to the place uh, of the, the, the house of John Mark. And after they arrived there, they started to knock. The people were in a prayer meeting. The people uh, were praying. And then uh, at that particular moment, uh, one of the girls went out and opened the door and said it is Peter. God has answered your prayers. What did they say? They said you are out of your mind. Murute, this is what I read. God is going to redo things in our midst. Or God, how can you answer so soon? God is opening doors. God will open doors for us. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up front. Let us pray. Let us believe together that God is opening all doors. I don't know which door doors do you want God to open maybe academic doors healing wellness doors breakthrough doors miracle doors relationship doors families and marriages business plans doors promotion doors victory doors favor doors, prayer spiritual doors, financial health doors. God is opening doors for each and every one of us. God is opening doors for the church of Jesus Christ. And let us believe Lord, together yes, as we stand on our feet that you are at the precipice. You are at the threshold of great things from the Lord.